So I have a New Holland model L785. This is a 1989 model. Great little machine, about 7,000 hours on it. Uh, hardly any problems with it other than what I have created. And that's what this video is about today. Uh, I would first need to thank my buddy Steve for many hours of time and effort trying to figure out electrical issues. And to my buddy Sasquatch who will be editing and putting this video together and posting it. My apologize if the quality of the video is not what you expect. This is my first and only attempt to ever make a video. And the only reason I'm doing it is because I ran into an issue uh, and in going through the forums and whatnot, I couldn't find anybody that had ever done this before. In fact, I had several folks tell me it couldn't be done. Uh, and I, while I appreciate their uh, input and feedback, they also help by uh, kind of giving me some thoughts to consider. So while on a job site, I had the battery tie down fail, which allowed the battery to slide over into the frame of the uh, machine which arced out both positive and negative doing just irreparable damage to the battery. And I'll post some videos or some pictures of uh, what that looked like. The initial indications were that the seat belt switch had failed. Uh, the boom and bucket solenoids would stop working. I'd reset the seat belt switch and uh, we'd be working just fine again for a few more minutes. This went on for about 30 minutes uh, in the middle of which I stopped to I uh, do some Google investigation to see if I can figure out what the problem was and everything put me right back to that seatbelt switch. In the end, uh, it took me a day or so to find that the battery had slid over. That wasn't the first place I looked. I did replace the seatbelt switch, but in that time, like I said, it destroyed the battery and apparently did some other damage as well. Uh, one of the things we think it damaged was the logic control module, which is this guy right here. The reason we think it was damaged is once the machine completely quit, no matter what we did, it wouldn't start. Uh, no matter what we did, the boom and bucket wouldn't operate. So this video is about how I overcame both of those. Uh, one thing I do need to say up front, I am not responsible for your decisions with your equipment. If you decide to do something like this, that's on you. Uh, this is just how I overcame it and did everything I could to keep all the safety features in place while I was doing so. So I don't know if I showed you this earlier or not, but uh, just to confirm that the logic module is actually disabled. Uh, it doesn't work anyway, nothing works with it. And uh, the only thing I've really lost in all of this is the lights that are indicator lights for issues and whatnot, which I didn't like anyway. So my intention, the next project will be to put gauges in. I have no intention of making a video about that because uh, most everyone, there's thousands of those videos out there. So uh, if you found this useful, great. If not, uh, delete it. Uh, but as I said at the beginning, I'm not responsible for what you do with your equipment and have a good day. The first issue having to be addressed was that we couldn't start. And so what I did was come into the ignition switch. I verified that I had 12 volts into the ignition switch and then off the ignition terminal, I ran a new line. And that's this black line right here that you can see. And what I did is I ran it around my cab, down the side, and just to protect things, I ran it into this inline fuse block. And all that is, is I, it's a 40 amp block, but I put a five inch fuse in it to uh, ensure I was protecting everything. And all it does is run down into here and over to the ignition relay. And with it in place, everything starts. After getting the starting problems figured out, the next issue was uh, not having boom and bucket control. And I played with a couple different configurations and finally decided it was more important that the boom and bucket be operated independently instead of working off of a single switch. And so that's what I ended up doing. But I had to have a 12 volt constant power supply. So coming off of one of the 12 volt constant terminals on the ignition switch, I then brought this white wire around, which follows the same path as the previous wire, around the side, down the back of the cab, and it also runs into its own dedicated inline fuse. But this power 
provides power to both the seat belt switch and the seat switch. These go into their various switches and come back out and they end up going through these two lines here that follow the original path of the wiring loom. And so I ran those around the front of the cab, brought them over to the boom and bucket solenoids and wired those in so that I had independent control of both products. That one's a little hard to see. So those black wires come around here and they tie in to the positive, the hot side of the boom and bucket. I also had to have a ground and that's what these yellow lines are. These yellow lines are my ground for those solenoids so that they will operate correctly. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, sitting in the seat, seat belt on, boom and bucket works out of the seat or with the seat belt off, either one, uh, boom and bucket will stop working. One of the solenoids, whichever one is tied to will stop working.